All right, so I want to kind of go into what people are calling the uh, trumpet waveform, dealing with these type of circuits right here. It's a waveform I saw on the scope a couple times, just didn't really think much of it. I'm looking at it, and it just reminded me so much of, you know, what I would see uh, from the output voltage to free air from running Tesla coil or something like that, you know, rising resonance. You know, when I started thinking about it, it didn't really make sense, right? You know, where is this pulse coming from? Where is this ringing coming from? So my first thought was it had to be the ZVS, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is still. Let's just say I've got this particular ZVS driver hooked up. Right now, the output is just dangling the free air. It's not hooked up to that capacitor. We're at a low enough voltage where I can just turn it on like that, and it's going to output. It's not going to arc over. This is the uh, frequency that it's running at, and it's about 38 kilohertz. So now what I'm going to do is the same thing, except I'm just going to turn it back on. I'm going to hold the probe in the air you know, over close to it. See, we've got the same field here. It's uh, about 38 kilohertz ringing going on. So this is the resonant drive of that flyback, right? That's not the 100 or so kilohertz I was actually seeing on the scope, but, you know, it makes more sense when you actually hook the capacitor up. So the way the ZVS driver works, the primary resonance is going to change because you've got this whole whole chain of inductors here. So once I add this capacitance across L2 of this transformer, now we've changed the frequency. So when I cut it back on, now we can see that the ZVS secondary the ZVS driver just altogether is now running at 107 kilohertz, right? So if we remember that 107 kilohertz, now I'm going to hook it back up and let it run. So going and again, take the probe, just kind of hold it over here, and we see we get that same type of waveform here, that ramp, right? So let me just set it over here by the flyback instead and if we zoom in that ramp and what do you see the frequency that is actually about a hundred and you know, five kilohertz something like that so that is that ringing I didn't get the whole let me just cut that on so that's that ringing you know that builds up before each discharge there and you have the ring down after it all right. You can pretty much see that what's happening is the uh, output of the flyback here, just the high frequency is just sort of like superimposing across the circuit and it's giving it this wireless field. So this is a waveform I would imagine that you're not going to see. It's not going to show up the same if you just uh, scope the uh, inductive loop here. So let me do that real quick. So now you can see I've got this loop here. I'm just going to hold it like that outside of the coil now we see you just got the uh, ringing okay. the main the L1 LC ringing but you don't see all that other other junk along with it right you just have the pulse and the ring down so now I've got this circuit back on and it's not hooked up right now it's just got the uh, power applied output is just to the free air so I'm just gonna run an arc see the driving frequency right now is 16.5 kilohertz. I'm going to cut that on, get that arc going, and I'm going to hold the probes up to it. All right, there we go. So we've got this pulse that comes up at about 16 and a half kilohertz. All right, so that's the widely different output signal with this particular circuit uh, than the ZVS. But you can see basically it's what's doing. you got this wireless field. Um, created by this extremely high voltage and uh, you know you're just picking that up to free air but you can see what that looks like is not a resonant sign you know it's more like this uh, asymmetrical pulse that has been you know the way this is working so now I've got the output hooked up once again same running frequency got the probe just kind of chilling over here hopefully that'll pick something up and now we're gonna look at it again so I'm cut it on like that so now we've got more or less the same thing, but it's a whole lot dirtier. So you see what's trying to create almost what you would call the trumpet waveform. So you move the probes around a little bit, see if I can, right? 
So if I hold the probe just right, you, I mean, you get the same effect. I'm just holding it right there. Uh, but let me move them back around. But what you see is, of course, what I would expect. This is going to be 16 and a half kilohertz. All right. So we've got the initial LC ring down right there. And let's zoom in over here to see what that is. And sure enough, you've got these little humps here at about 16 and a half kilohertz. So again, this is the driving frequency of the high voltage side. It's that ringing that you see, that field. So basically, when I switch over to the resonant drive, it becomes a lot clearer. It looks more like a defined trumpet because you've got this rising sign instead of this dirty... Uh, asymmetrical signal now at the same time that's half wave rectified but you're still picking up the field coming off the secondary right so that sort of explains that now the question is I think which is what's interesting to people is what is explaining the rise here you know why would you have this cap dump right here ringing damping down fizzling out and then you've got this ringing over here that actually rises in amplitude until the next one. It gives you some impression that the L1 coil is doing all types of crazy, you know, over unity ringing or something, uh, just building up in all this energy that it would dump into the load before the next one. When in reality, if you actually clean this up and look at your actual circuit, what your coils are doing, uh, then you'll probably see this dump right here, a ring down, then a whole bunch of dead space until you get to the next one. Uh, you know, so this kind of goes into the whole point of why you, the frequency matters. When you're dealing with these pulses, you're, you know, the idea is like, well, I'm going to dump this energy into this tank and it's going to ring around. And as it's doing that, the load, it's, the load's damping, it's transferring power. And I guess somewhere along the line is the idea is you're going to find some way to take use of reactive power uh, in this ringing. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be honest. But, you know, the whole idea there is, well, if you do have all this built up ringing, then, you know, maybe that's what's powering your load. But in reality, you just have a whole bunch of dead space. And if you fill that dead space with a higher frequency, then you're going to, you know, transfer more power, more or less. What does explain the rise? Well, you kind of see what looks like here is I would imagine you're going to have a steady amplitude of this ringing at all times with the steady state output. So let's just imagine there was no cap dumping going on at all. Then what you're going to see is just a steady amplitude all the way across. You're not going to have any rise. This is the energy that you're putting out. This is the ringing that is being put out by the high voltage transformer. But there's a point and during the discharge, when that output is more or less directly shorted. So it's like basically what you have is a rise in your amplitude that's not actually exceeding the supply. It's just being sort of quenched, damped down really hard, and then it's able to ring back up again. So in the end, whether you're pretty much just probing the air around the circuit, or let's say you're actually uh, probing somewhere on the circuit directly, if you end up seeing this uh, trumpet waveform, then, you know, what's, what seems to be what's happening is if you catch that waveform to where it's rising in amplitude right after the LC ringing fizzles out, then you can pretty much assume then that what's happening is, is your high voltage side right here on the input, which is more or less going to be in parallel with the capacitance. It's going to be charging up the capacitor at all times. It's going to go through these cycles of charge and dump. So by the time your capacitor dumps, this thing right here is recharging the capacitor you have your high voltage output which is literally recharging the capacitor if we know that this output uh, field the high voltage field is what we're picking up in the air with our probe and you can imagine this amplitude is going to rise over time until it reaches a peak until it dumps the capacitor so i mean in my opinion this is what explains the the trumpet the trumpet waveform that you'd actually want to see let's just say would be something along the lines of you're scoping your coil here and you see a dump into the LC circuit, and then magically, this LC circuit rings higher in amplitude instead of ringing down. You know, if it was to magically ring and just keep getting higher and higher, then obviously you're looking at something special there. Um, 
If it starts fizzling down as it does, then that's what you would expect. That's just normal activity. Um, so as far as like this trumpet wave and associating with that with over unity, I would say you have to really make that determination there. You know, are you actually just scoping the output waveform of your high voltage side, just watching it charge up the capacitor? Or are you looking at some type of actual gain even if it looks like some type of crazy overshoot it seems like it doesn't actually balance out to unity <laughs> you know what i mean uh but that's basically i wanted to sort of get into that trumpet thing because it did show up you know on the scope just probing around but I, I don't think it's anything special to be honest so i guess the question is you know where does this voltage come from is it usable you know what's going on with it well I would say that wave is not very usable at all because it's just a you know small amount of current. You know, it's very high voltage, and it's basically <clears throat> voltage in the air. And what happens is is let's just say I take a ground right here. Ground is not hooked up. So that's that dirty ringing all in the air. And just go ahead and clip that on to the low side here. So this is just the low side, the power source coming off the uh, supply here, driving this circuit. Cut it back on. Now you see it's more or less going away. I don't have all this crazy voltage in the air. You still get a little bit, you know, dirty signal. And if I disconnect the ground again right there, then it comes back. So, I mean, this is sort of all related to uh, a ground reference, forming a reference. And let's just say I do the opposite. Now I'm going to cut the circuit back on going like that so i'm gonna take it and hook it on the little center tap here and show the difference so that's the voltage without it and then when i hook it up like that as you can see it, the amplitude goes up a little bit so then disconnect it again and drops a little bit probe picking up the voltage to free air once i've created an actual ground reference over here it's not a reference i'm tying this to ground which is basically means that you've got another high part of the circuit which can more easily form a reference to ground you actually have a, a ground point established